I'm really excited about the new pink boxes from Ginger Quilter. Rumor has it the brown ones are gone and this is in. Hey friends, welcome back to my sewing room. My name is Becca and in today's video we're going to take a look at the February 2023 Ginger Quilter box. I can't wait to dive in and see what's here. If you want to know what was in the January box, I actually didn't do an unboxing video. Instead, I opened it on a live stream and I put the project together on a live stream as well. I'll link to that video somewhere up here or down there if you're interested in seeing it. Let's dive in. Ta-da! <laughs> oh, okay. This is all new. This is fun. So instead of just being a two-page pamphlet that tells you about everything that's in the box, there's a little bit more information. So I'm going to give you all of this as we go through. But before we start, I want to tell you the theme of the box and read the intro that she has for you. The theme of the box is Jane Austen. She says, upon being struck with the inspiration for this month's theme, I could scarce believe that it had not occurred to me sooner. For, as I hold the esteemed Miss Austen in such great regard, it seemed a natural fit for the Ginger Quilter box. The task of curating pieces for this box has been a particular pleasure. I, dis I deepest desire... I think she meant my deepest desire, is to create a box that will bring delight upon opening. I sincerely hope it meets with your approval. There is also a member spotlight. Everybody meet Kara Johnson. She is from Minnesota. And her favorite GQ box says, it is so hard to choose, but maybe the collab with My So Quilty Life from March 2022, she needed to make a baby girl quilt and it was perfect. Her favorite quilt pattern, she enjoys coming up with her own or modifying patterns that she sees. Otherwise, pen and paper patterns have awesome designs. What she would like to see in the next box. My seam rippers are breaking or missing, so another would be handy. And her guilty pleasure song, she says she's been listening to a lot of Elvis lately. Nice to meet you, Kara. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to pull out of the box is this little pendant. We got one of these in a sew sampler box a while ago. It's kind of neat. Check this out. Natalie writes, this unique charm is designed to easily cut threads, making it the perfect accessory for an accomplished young sewist such as yourself. Whether you're sitting at your machine or need to snip a loose thread on your embroidery sampler, this charm will prove most useful. Enjoy the convenience of having a thread cutter always on hand. So what this does, I don't know if you can see, around the outside of this pendant are little notches that expose a sharp blade inside of the tool. And so you can take your thread and put it in any of those notches to do a little cut. You can wear this around your neck. You can hang it somewhere. I think this is probably actually a little too short for my big neck, but I could easily replace this ribbon with something a little bit longer and wear it as a jewelry item as well. We have a quote rose candle. Light up this charmingly scented candle adorned with a quote by Jane Austen herself. And the quote up here says, there is no charm equal to tenderness of heart. The candle, crafted with the utmost care and precision from the finest soy wax, excudes the gentle aroma of freshly plucked roses, filling any room with an air of tranquility and romance. Yep, definitely smells like romance and roses. She says, as you light the candle and allow the warm glow to envelop you, allow yourself to be transported to a world of refinement where scenes never need unpicking and bobbins never need rewinding. <laughs> Cute. I like the candle, actually. It smells really good, and I really like the tin that it's in. This would make a great little gift or a cute decoration for the shelves behind me. We have one more item before we get into the project, and it is a tin of pride and peppermints. <laughs> she says, these peppermints have only genius, wit, and taste to recommend them. Or at least that's what the container says. How was I supposed to resist these adorable mint tins while I was looking for the perfect treat for a Jane Austen box? They might not be the sweetest treat, but they will certainly come in handy. Let's taste them and see how they taste. And I do like getting mints like this in a metal tin because I feel like when the tin is cute like this, you can reuse it to hold needles or other little loose notions. It doesn't want to open. Open! There we go. This is what the mints look like inside. 
pull one out. Hmm. It's definitely pepperminty. Almost Altoid strain. Love them. The pattern that we have is called the Miss Woodhouse Quilt Pattern, and it's a QR code that you're going to use to download the PDF and save to your device and put print when you're ready. The pattern looks like this, and Natalie writes that the Miss Woodhouse Quilt Pattern is a striking pattern from which the very inspiration for the entire box was drawn. It is itself inspired by Emma, a favorite novel among Miss Austen's canon. The amusingly ignorant actions of the protagonist have oft brought me comfort in reflecting on my own youthful foolishness. Though I do not typically have a need to hang a great many quilts, the picturesque nature of this one has me seeking unoccupied space upon my walls. The numerous half square triangles in this pattern may prove trying, yet I assure you the effort is most certainly worth it. Persevere. Man, she is definitely channeling her inner Jane Austen when she wrote this pamphlet. I feel like the flow sounds like one of Jane Austen's books, not just uh, Natalie's normal newsletter that comes with a box. So did I pick up on that correctly, Natalie? You'll have to let me know. <laughs> To make that quilt, you guys, she chose solids that I am over the moon for. Take a look at this. We have an entire bundle of confetti solids from Riley Blake, and the colors of this are just absolutely gorgeous. Natalie writes that she'll take a break from the Jane Austen style writing, so I was right. Okay, I'll take a break from the Jane Austen style writing for a second to tell you about this fabric bundle. There are 11 total colors in this custom bundle. I chose them to follow the same color scheme as the cover photo, which I totally picked up on. Like, I, I saw this and I was like, ooh, it's the fabric version of the pamphlet. Two for two. <laughs> She said she did not know that they would turn out to make a really pretty rainbow. Most of the pieces are a quarter yard, so they are interchangeable if you'd like to mix up the color placements. Please note that the pair is a one-eighth yard and cannot be changed around. I labeled the colors so you can see how I laid them out. All right, back to all the fancy talk. Or not, because we've looked at everything else in the box, so we're done with the fancy talk. If you're curious and you want to know what they are, I'll tell you. This is... Olive, grass, celery, lettuce, pear, beehive, mac and cheese, Riley orange, persimmon, Riley raspberry, and coral. And then this back is whatever. It doesn't say what the back one is, but navy or whatever. So there you go. I'm kind of excited to work with these salads. I'll tell you, I've not really been a big fan of salads, but lately I feel very drawn to salads, especially in this color palette. Maybe I'll make the pattern that she gave to us. Maybe I'll use them for something else, but I am definitely keeping these quarter yard cuts all together so that when a project hits me, I can put them all together in the same thing. Probably will make the pattern that she gave to us. That's it, February 2023 Ginger Coulter Box. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye!